are about to hear a romantic drama, Just Another Blonde, from Street and Smith's Love Story magazine, featuring the love story girl in the role of Jean Moore. This is the story of Jean Moore, who started off from her home in Huronsville, Indiana, to carve out a niche for herself in little old New York. When she left Huronsville, Jean's only assets were 50 hard-earned dollars and an antique Ford affectionately referred to as Napoleon. It's the morning of her third day out. The nights have been spent in tourist camps, where Jean has been only too glad to do odd jobs to help pay her way. We find her in the back kitchen of Mrs. Oberfelder's barbecue lunchroom, washing dishes to pay for her breakfast. Well, there you are, Mrs. Oberfelder. I guess that finishes the lot. Anything else you'd like me to do? No, that's plenty. Just you go running along, you and your Napoleon, before it gets hot from the sunshine out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I, I guess I will shove along. We, we've got quite a few hills to climb today, and Napoleon sort of has to take it easy or he boils yeah. over. Well, well, goodbye, Mrs. Oberfeld, and thanks for everything. Oh, don't mention it, miss. It's a pleasure. You want I should have Gussie crank it up for you? No, thanks. I can manage it. I... Good heavens, Napoleon's gone. Oh, Mrs. Oberfelder. Oh, Gussie Slow. Napoleon, someone's taken Napoleon. You mean your car is gestoned? Oh, no, I mean, it wouldn't be worthwhile for anyone to do a thing like that. Napoleon couldn't possibly bring more than $20 as junk. Oh, no, it's one of those loafers from Pottersburg going joyriding again. Joyriding? Yeah, what did he give? Three cars missing this month. Oh. You wait here till I call up the police. Oh, dear, who would want to take poor old Napoleon joyriding? I wonder if I left the key in the ignition. No, no, here it is in my pocketbook. Oh, Dear. Oh, Mrs. Oberfelder, what did they say? Oh, I'm sorry. I got bad news for you, miss. Oh, you mean they can't find Napoleon? No, they find him okay. In but... a ditch all crumpled up. Oh. A car made an Indiana license all busted up. Well, I still got $45. I wonder what I do now. Miss, you take my advice. What's that? You're too nice to go to New York without you got plenty of money. Why not you turn around and go back home? Well, I suppose that would be the sensible solution, but... I haven't got a home. He's got no home, a nice girl like you? Not since father died. You see, he, he was sick a long time, and I had to sell the store to pay back his hospital bill, so there's nothing to go back to. Oh. I, I've got kind of a half promise of a job in New York, so I guess I'll just keep on. Yeah, but how are you going to get there? Hitchhike. Plenty of people do what they tell me. Not nice people, especially pretty girls. Don't you take hitchhikers with no men. That don't come to no good. Men, they don't ever give nuttings for nothing. <laughs> You're telling me. Well, now, don't you worry, Mrs. Oberfelder. I promise I won't ask you for a lift unless there's a woman in the car. Oh, goodness, my feet are killing me. This suitcase is getting heavier every minute. Hello, gorgeous. You going my way? No, thanks. I'm walking for my health. Ah, come on, beautiful. You're too pretty to get flat feet pounding the road. You see this rock? Well, if you don't move on, I'll, I'll break your windshield. Go on now. Nasty, eh? Okay. I hope your feet drop off at the ankle. Well, it feels as though he's going to get his wish any time now. Oh. Oh, here's a tree. I think I'll sit down in the shade and take off my shoes a minute. Oh, boy, that feels good. Oh, dear, here comes another one. Oh, brat, all men anyway. Why can't they leave me alone? Oh, oh he's getting out. Well, where's the rock? Oh, he's not coming over here. He's, he's gone round the back of the car. Oh, he's got a flat. He looks like a greenhorn around the car, though. Guess he's never had a flat before. Pardon me. Uh, what? Uh, that is, you, you look kind of puzzled. Can I help? Oh, well, uh, you see, I've never changed a tire before. I guess that. I have, though, often. No mystery to me. Then maybe if you wouldn't mind telling me what to do, I probably can manage. Well, I can do better than that. I'll help you do it. Where do you keep your tools? Well, that's that. Thanks. Uh, how much do I owe you? Nothing. I did it as a favor. Oh, I mean, I... Oh, that's all right. You're going east? Yes, that is as far as Pottersburg. Well, every little bit helps. Will you give me a lift? Why, uh... Yes, I suppose so. Get in. I'm in kind of a hurry. Oh, thanks. Thanks. 
Oh, boy, is this a relief. I never realized till today what a grand invention a motor car really is. Uh-huh. Oh, this is certainly beautiful country you have around here. I said this is certainly beautiful country. Yes, I heard you. Do you need an order from the president before you can talk? No. Well, whenever you feel in the mood, you'll find me sitting right here beside you. How do you happen to be on the road? I came to New York to get a job, I hope. Isn't that dangerous? Not if you're a fairly good judge of people. Oh, so you can judge people. How do you know I'm not a gangster? Well, if you are, you're the first one I ever heard of with a Phi Beta Kappa key. Even a Phi Beta Kappa key isn't a guarantee of good behavior. Now, don't tell me you're a depraved character because I wouldn't believe it. You look too harmless. Harmless? Suppose I were to stop the car and try to kiss you. <laughs> I don't really think that would change the fate of the nation. Do you? Mm-hmm. I thought so. Just another blonde. Why, what do you mean? A pickup for anyone. Why, you... Oh, look out! That tree! You're headed for the tree! Oh, are you... Are you all right? Well, I hope you're satisfied. It made me smash my car. Well, it says you're right for insulting me. The motor's dead. Now we'll both have to thumb a ride into town. Thanks, but I wouldn't go any further with you if you were the last man on earth. Suits me fine. I just... Oh, what's the oh. matter? What's the matter? My leg, I'm afraid it's broken. Broken? Oh, oh, goodness, it's all my fault. Oh, rats. I feel kind of dizzy. Here comes a car. Tell them to take me to the Travers Hospital. My name's Morley, Frank Morley. Oh, yes, I... Oh, good Lord, he's fainted. Well, good morning, miss. How is Mr. Morley this morning? Better than he thinks he is. Oh. The doctor says it's just a simple fracture. Of course, it's pretty painful right now, and he's as cross as a bear, but the doctor says he'll be up and about in six weeks anyway. Six weeks? Oh, dear, that's an awfully long time. Not for a broken leg. Aren't you the young lady that brought him in here? I'm afraid so. Well, then I guess you can go right on in. He needs cheering up. Thanks. I'll do my best, but I don't know if it'll work. Oh, it's you. Oh, good morning. I I just dropped around to tell you how sorry I was about yesterday. Don't tell me you stayed over just to tell me that. Well, I'm not in any hurry. I thought there might be something I could do for you. There is. You can go somewhere where I'll never have to look at you again. Oh, I, I wish you wouldn't hate me so. The nurse says it won't be long before you're up and about again, as good as new. Long, huh? I wasn't up and about last night, was I? I'd promised to take my fiancé to the country club dance. Well, she went with someone else. I, I didn't know you were engaged. Yes, I'm engaged. And her name's Roberta Corbin. Oh. Doggone good-looking girl. Too good-looking. Hello, Frank. Thanks for the booze. Roberta! Gosh, it's good to see you. Well, Frank, I didn't know you had callers. Well, I, I was just going. Oh, don't get up. I can only stay a minute. But, Roberta... I... Bill Hewlett drove me over. He's waiting downstairs for me. We're going for a swim. Bill Hewlett, huh? Yes. Well, I'd better be running along. Bill hates to be kept waiting. Here's a kiss for you, Angel. I'll drop in and see you again sometime. Bill Hewlett. Yeah, now see what you've done. Well, if you ask me, you'll be lucky if Bill Hewlett does cut you out with that gal. All she thinks of is her own pleasure. Who asked you? Nobody. What's more, you aren't really in love with her. You're just infatuated with her good looks. Well, of all the... Uh, hello, Frank. Say, what is this? A guy has about as much privacy in here as in Grand Central Station. Is that a nice way to talk to your partner? Allow me to present myself, miss. My name is Thompson. Jefferson Thompson. I'm Frank's partner. Well, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Thompson. My name's Jean Moore. I didn't know Frank... I mean, Mr. Morley was in business. Sure, he's in business. Morley and Thompson. Own two of the finest antique stores in Upper New York State. I run the one over in Cooperstown, and Frank runs the one here in Pottersburg. Oh. Oh, that reminds me, Frank. Guess we'll have to close up your end of the business till you're out of the hospital. Seems a shame right at the height of the season. Oh, oh, Mr. Thompson, I know it's presumptuous on my part, but I used to manage my father's store in Huronsville back in Indiana, and, well, I feel sort of responsible for Mr. Morley being in the hospital. And I wonder if I couldn't run the shop for him until he gets well. Here, hold on a minute. Not a bad idea. Hey, what is this? Didn't you say your name was Moore and you come from Huronsville? That's right. You wouldn't be Jeremiah Moore's daughter. Yes, Jeremiah Moore was my father. Well, well, what do you know? Jeremiah and I were in college together. Oh. 
And uh, you think you'd like to take over Frank's store, do you? Oh, only till he gets well again. Yeah, but I don't want... Molly and Thompson are honored by the association this morning. <laughs> Uh, come on, and I'll show you the tricks of the trade. Look here, I have something to say about this. That's what you think. Please don't worry, Mr. Morley. I'll drop in every evening and let you know how I'm getting on. That's all I need. Well, I must say, Janie, Frank couldn't have done it better than on the job himself. Oh, thanks, Mr. Thompson. Oh, say, how are you and he getting on? Oh, much better. He, he stopped swearing at me. The young idiot. I was hoping now that he caught sight of a real girl. He might forget about that overpainted Jezebel he's been attacking after. Oh, I don't think she's as bad as that, Mr. Thompson. That is just kind of young and... And spoiled. Spoiled clean through. What she won't do with this 10,000 pounds inheritance the boy has come into. 10,000 pounds inheritance? Oh, yes, didn't I tell you? No. It's here in this cablegram. Came first thing this morning. He'll have to go to London this summer to see about it, I reckon. Oh, that's wonderful. Give it to me. I'll take it out to the hospital. Today's the day I'm bringing Frank ba back, you know. Oh, oh, excuse me a moment. Oh, sure, sure. Hello? Hello, Jean. Oh, yes, Frank. I just wanted to tell you not to call for me at the hospital today. Oh. Roberta's coming to get me. She says there's something she wants to talk over about our wedding. Oh. Thought I'd better get things straightened out. Bill Hewlett's been cutting in too much lately. Mm, I see. Anything you want to talk to me about? Any important mail? No. No, nothing, Frank. Nothing at all. Frank, what... Frank, I, I thought you were going out to Roberta's to discuss the wedding. I did. It's all off, Jean. Oh, Frank. Yeah, she decided Bill was a better bet. It oh. seems he's got about $35,000 in the bank. But you've got that, Frank, more than that. Jean, are you cuckoo? Well, 10,000 pounds is almost $50,000, isn't it? That's what you inherited. Here's the cable. What? Well, I'll be... Jean, when did this cable come? This, this morning. Well, then you lied to me when I asked you if there was any mail or anything over the phone. Yes. Oh, why? Well, that is... Well, if Roberta was going to marry you, I, I wanted it to be for yourself, not for the money. You you had a hunch that she was going to go for Bill Hewlett on account of his money? Oh, Frank, I, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't bear to see you get a deal like that. Why? Because I love you myself, I suppose. You do? Mm-hmm. Hey, how long has this been going on? Ever since I helped you with that tire. Well, you know, maybe that was why I was kind of relieved when Roberta told me we were all washed up. Oh, Frank. Yeah, it's true. I've I've been kind of dreading marching down that aisle with Roberta for some time now. You know, someone else kind of seemed to fit better into that picture. Who? A hitchhiking blonde I picked up oh. once. She was bound for New York. Hey, funny if she ended up in London on our honeymoon. Oh, Frank. Oh, Jeannie, darling. You have been listening to a romance featuring the Love Story Girl and presented with the permission of Street and Smith, publishers of Love Story magazine. Listen for the Love Story Girl in a new romance next week. Thank you.